It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we'll see who rules the skies in tonight's battle. It's the Seattle Seahawks and the Baltimore Ravens, next on Madden Football. With Chesapeake Bay gleaming in the distance, we are inside m and Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. But Charles, this Ravens team been so successful in recent years, 10 or more wins in four of the last five seasons. What do they need to do to take that next step? Well, the way the Ravens have played for a lot of their franchise history, we know the defense is going to take care of business. They're going to keep you in every ball game. I think on offense, can they throw the ball more proficiently, especially out wide to the receivers, and make plays that way to continue to open up running lanes for a team that we know loves to move the ball along the ground. Meanwhile, for the visiting Seahawks, most of the pundits, yourself included, Charles, gave their draft class high marks. And that comes after you. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. And all the way in for the Ravens touchdown. That kick return TD is 98 yards in length. And the Ravens put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that their players can't keep up with. And they say, challenge him, kick it to him. The way he runs as fast as he is, I wouldn't challenge him at all. I'd do everything possible to keep it away. He is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam and he got a full head of steam there. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And the Ravens lead at 7 0. So, how about that for an intriguing start? The opening kickoff of the ball game, return for a touchdown. So, let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. And we will not see an attempt to match that return touchdown as this will be a touchback and bring it out to the 25. So the Seahawks ready to take over on offense. And it is a first-time Pro Bowler who leads him out, Charles, in his 11th year now, Geno Smith. When the Seahawks named Smith the starter last season, it gave him an opportunity he wasn't sure he would get again. And then he became one of the best quarterbacks in football and sustained it across a full 17 games winning comeback player of the year. Saved his career with last season and keeps the Seahawks as true contenders. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Oh, his first throw of the game, going to be intercepted. Picked up by Patrick Queen. And the return here will go to the 31-yard line. Offensively, a far from ideal start there with a pick on the opening drive. Yeah, not exactly what they were looking for. We know that. That's pretty obvious. The beauty, though, is it's happening early. If they don't panic, they don't compound this problem, they've got a long way to go and a chance to get back in it. The Ravens offense set to go to work, and it's Lamar Jackson now in his sixth NFL campaign who will lead the way. All the talk of Jackson leaving the Ravens this offseason was just that. Talk as the two sides hammered out a deal that made the highest paid player in the NFL. And why would they want to separate? When he has the ball in his hands, great things typically happen. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. After the interception, here's Jackson. He finds his man, it's Charlie Kohler. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 
It's a pickup on 11 and a Baltimore first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because they'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. They'll run. This is Gus Edwards. And he gets it down close to the 10-yard line. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. That was a good forceful run, and it demonstrates why you've got to put your body on a runner when you're trying to tackle him. If you just go in there and just try and get him down with arm tackles, usually doesn't work very well, and we saw on that play, he'll run right through those attempted plays. On third and short, they'll try option left, and he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option. And he will take it in for a Ravens touchdown. Gus Edwards, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Ravens have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in and have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Tucker now for the extra point. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. So that drive spanned five plays, and it was polished off by the Gus Edwards touchdown run. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. And Charles, it's kind of gut check time. Look, I know it's early first quarter, just their second drive of the game, but they've already thrown the interception, given up the score. You're down double digits. they got to figure out something and pretty quickly here. No doubt about it. And when we look at that sideline, I'm sure you're observing the same thing I am. I don't like the body language at all. They look like they're in a state of stunned disbelief. So to me, we always talk about someone stepping up and making a big play. I think it would behoove them if multiple guys step up and make big plays right now. They need something positive to happen, and they need for it to happen now. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs or putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. Fourteen nothing the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Seahawk football here to start quarter number two as they've got it with a third down coming up. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Back to throw, Smith. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. On first down, Smith. And his throw here is incomplete. 
Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. You've got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. On second down, it's Walker. And running and shedding the tackle, and now some room. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. They had a chance to limit his yardage, but he was able to fight off that tackle. So it's not just the responsibility of the guys who missed the tackles along the way. It's all 11 on defense, able to stop this guy, unable to do it on that play. They've got to find a way. How about his ability to break through and gain that yardage? And he's brought down at the 19 after a game of 19. First down in the red zone. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. That's complete to Disley. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. It's 14 to nothing. So they keep the ball, but work to do on second and long. Now Smith. Out to the right, he gets it to Lockett. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. Seems as if the passing attack's starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open. Touchdown, Seahawks! DK Metcalf from six yards away. And the Seahawks are back within a score. Good bounce back drive right there through the pick on drive number one. Drive number two leads them right down the field into the end zone. Agree totally. Excellent bounce back. Tremendous poise. Confidence never lost. And obviously he transmitted that to his teammates as well. What a really nice drive. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And that one makes it 14-7. to seven. That time, a nine-play drive. And it's DK Metcalf who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. Devin Duvernay now returning from the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And not an abundance of time remains on the clock, Charles, but you would think more than enough to try to extend this lead before intermission. And when you're talking about extending the lead, I think you're talking about aiming for the end zone because there is plenty of time for that. The fallback is to get three. But in your mind, you put six on the board right before the half. That's a heck of a dagger and great momentum to carry into the locker room. Second and a couple. Now it's Jackson. He'll let it go deep for Beckham. And it's knocked away and incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try and throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. This is caught at the 20. A big play there just before halftime. 53 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be, because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. And this is caught. Touchdown, Baltimore. Nelson Aguilar. As the first half is winding down. And the Ravens. 
Dallas will extend their lead here just before halftime. And that's certainly an important score right there because they gave themselves a two-score cushion heading towards halftime. Now you got to force the other team out of their comfort zone, and it changes the way you approach the second half as well. How you want to do things on offense, and your defense feels much better too, having that lead. Tucker with the extra point, and it's now 21-7. to seven. So that drive, four plays. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Dallas now to return it from his end zone. And he returns this to the 22. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And with seven seconds remaining, not much time to really do anything. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. And this will be a Seahawks first down as he gets this up past the 30 to the 32. And we're going to get a timeout. With two seconds remaining in the second quarter from the 32 now. Here's first and 10. The final shot here before break. Smith. Catch is made by Metcalf. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports halftime report. The highlights are fairly one-sided to this point. It's a two-touchdown difference here at the break. But I wouldn't call this one over just yet. I think there could still be some fireworks yet to come. We saw a terrific first half from the dual threat quarterback, Lamar Jackson. He's got a touchdown pass on the ledger as his guys were able to build a double digit lead. All Both right, teams Coach, going back to their game plans, making their final halftime adjustments. For and for the call three. of the second half, we go back up to Baltimore and rejoin Brandon and Charles. The Seahawks trailing, but they will have possession first here as we resume action in the third quarter. And he will not bring it out. It's a touchback. The Seahawk offense set to go to begin this third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Now Smith. Now wasted time going right back to DK Metcalf. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Another big play as they get 28 out of that one. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Walker now at first and 10. Touchdown, Seattle! 26 yards for Ken Walker. And the Seahawks come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard and you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Myers connects on the PAT. And they're back with it a touchdown at 21-14. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Strong running at the 30. A solid return, pretty good field position. A start at the 32. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. And maybe some renewed pressure on this unit following the touchdown a moment ago. It's back to a one-score game. And because of that pressure, 
because it's now a one score game, they know this is where you need to slow the momentum change because otherwise that could overrun your team. You gotta be careful right here. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Now Jackson on second down. And the Seahawks defense gets to him and they bring him down. Bobby Wagner multiple times in all pro in there to drop him for a loss. This defense coming out after the half, and if that plays any indicator, Charles, maybe a little refreshed and refocused here for quarters three and four. Yeah, they did really well on that one. That's exactly what they need to keep doing if they want to change their fortunes in this game. Now after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. Off the draw, here's Hill. And this play going to be stopped in its tracks at the 32, and obviously well short of the first down. They do get 10 back, but still a ways to go on fourth. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And the ball now going back over the Seattle Seahawks offense. And this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Sticking with Walker on second down. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. He'll let this go deep for Smith and Jigba. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. A lot of talk this week about ball security. In fact, they added an extra period in practice to be more secure with the ball. It didn't work out there. Well, sometimes you just get overexcited during the game. You may all of a sudden make your catch, see some open field, and decide you're going for it and not realizing the danger lurks while you're doing so. And there's your end result right there. Baltimore with good starting field position as they come up first and 10 at their 38. After the fumble recovery, it's Jackson. That's complete to his receiver, Bateman. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Ten yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Jackson now. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Part of what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. On second down, Jackson. And he bats it away and it falls down incomplete. It's been a struggle for him accruing yards in this game, passing the football. So there he said, hey, I'm going to try to chuck it deep, but another incompletion. Has to be a little bit frustrating because of what you just described. It's been a struggle for him here in the second half, hoping for one big shot to get him out of the doldrums. Now, meanwhile, a final play here is incomplete, and that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter of play. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL. 
on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. As it looks like we are just about set and ready to begin with the fourth. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Well, this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Gino now to throw. Walker with a grab, left side. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Well, offensively, that's a mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Smith going to throw on third and one. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. If they get a game-changing score on this drive, it's going to be because of plays like that. That run was pure heart. Took it himself, found a way to reset the downs, and advance the ball. Now Gino on first down. And the comeback may start out. It's intercepted. Picked up by Arthur Mellow. And he will bring this back. It's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. Boy, that's about as tough as they come. You're driving to try to put the ball in the end zone and tie the game, and that happens. It's exciting for us, wasn't it? Because we were thinking, hey, we might be headed towards overtime Instead, it looks like this one may very well be done. And guess what? If you're a fantasy owner and you have that defense, you just had a big, big game, didn't you? Now Tucker to add the PAT. He's got it as they double up the lead. This one's now 28-14. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. So Gino and the Seahawks down by two touchdowns, 2.13 remaining. They have all three timeouts and the two-minute warning, but they need two scores. Fresh off the pick six, it's Smith. To the right side and complete to Metcalf. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. On first and 10, Smith. Gets this complete to Smith and Jigba. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Here's second down and three. Smith. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. And now the focus is really clear. They need to get that first down and either get out of bounds or maybe use one of those timeouts. The noise is getting deafening. Here's third down and three. And he's caught. And he's got this down to the 35. All three timeouts remain, but they've got to score quick. It's first and 10. Smith to throw. 
Throw left side complete. That's Walker. And he'll go down at the 28. Here's second down. Smith's going to throw it. And he takes this one into the end zone. And all of a sudden, here in the final minute, things get a little bit tighter. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Extra point up and through by Myers. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So a little under 50 seconds to go. Plenty of time if they can get this onside kick. And who's got it? I think the Ravens do. Yes. And they're going to win this football game. The fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it they do actually recover the ball which is what we saw here I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number kind of like when the coaches tell us well when you score on special teams 93 percent of the time you win the game I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical we gotta have two hands on the football here as they run on first down and a good physical run that time he's gonna wind up gaining five on that one. Second and five He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Oh, breaks the tackle. He's got one to run. But he has the Ravens first down, and it would appear that that's going to be the one to do it. Again, it's Edwards. Breaks the tackle, now Allen. And he's brought down, but not before a really nice stiff arm to create a little space. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds left to go. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. It's a pickup of five, and that should just about wrap this one up. But they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They have punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them. Provide a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. And they run the option here on first and ten. And he is going to be stopped here at the line of scrimmage. And time is going to expire in this football game. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And we talked so much about the turnover battle determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They look like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the offense. Special teams right there with them. That's the type of game.